So you've decided to learn how to make iOS apps. You've got a bunch of app ideas, you've got your iPhone, and of course, you've got your Apple Mac. What's that? You don't have a Mac? Well, you're certainly not alone there. The vast majority of people out there are using Windows. And that's a problem if you want to learn how to make iOS apps. The software that you're going to need to do that only runs on the Mac operating system OS X. Most people will tell you that you either need to shell out $1,000 on a new Mac or you need to forget about iOS development altogether. Don't worry, you can ignore those people because today I'm going to tell you how to do iOS programming without a Mac. And it's really, really simple. So what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need Windows 10. Now, this technique may well work on earlier versions of Windows, but personally, I haven't tried it. So I can't tell you whether it'll work properly or not on Windows 8 or indeed 7. You're also going to need 8 gigabytes of RAM or more. Now, that shouldn't be a problem because most modern PCs do come with 8 gigabytes RAM as a minimum. And finally, you're going to need to download all the files that you'll need to place the OS X operating system on your computer. And you can do that by clicking here or there's a link in the video description below. Now, it's a pretty big download. So what I suggest you do is click here, go and start the files downloading, then come back to the video and watch what you're going to do in order to install the files once they finish downloading. But don't worry, it's very, very simple. OK, great. So we've got your files downloading. In the meantime, I'm going to switch over to Windows and show you exactly what you need to do once the files have downloaded to your computer. OK, so as you can see, that huge file that you guys are downloading right at the moment is sitting right on my desktop. It's called VMware Tutorial and it's a zip file. So the first thing we're going to need to do is right click on it and press Extract All. Now that's going to open up the zip wizard and it's going to ask you where you want to save the files. And I'm just going to place them right on the desktop alongside the zip file. Now, it's a large file, so it's going to take a little bit of time to unzip. So I'm going to fast forward the video so that you don't need to wait around. OK, great. The contents of the zip file have been placed on the desktop. You can see the VMware tutorials folder there. And that means we can delete the original zip file. We don't need it anymore. OK, great. Let's get stuck in. Open up that folder and you'll see the four different files that we're going to need to work with. The first thing we're going to do is install a program called WinRAR. Now, it's quite a common application, so you might already have it installed. But if you don't, double click on the file called WinRAR x64 and follow through the simple install wizard. It's just a case of pressing install and then waiting. The next step is to install an application called VMware Player. Now, this application is what is going to allow us to run OS X from right here within Windows 10. So double click on it and run through the install wizard. You know the drill. It's just a case of pressing next, 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 agreeing to a license agreement and then pressing finish. Now, when it's finished, you should see a shortcut to it on the desktop. But if not, you can always find it within your start menu. Now, we just want to activate VMware Player first. So if you double click on its icon and open it up, you'll be presented with a screen which asks you what kind of license you want to use. Now, VMware Player is free for personal use. So you'll want to tick that checkbox and then they're going to need your email address. Um, it doesn't need to be a genuine one. You can put in whatever email address you want. Now, once you've done that, you'll come to this welcome screen. We don't need to do anything here for now. You can just close it down. I just wanted to make sure that you've activated the software because we're going to modify its settings in the next step. Now, the next thing to do is to open up this folder here, Unlocker 204. Now, inside this folder, you'll find a bunch of files, but the one we're interested in is right at the bottom and it's called win-install. Go and right click this file and then select run as administrator. All you need to do is wait for this command line screen to do its stuff. And when it's finished, it'll automatically disappear. OK, done. Now you just need to go back to our original four files and we're going to take care of the last step to install OS X in a folder on your computer. 
So double click the final file, the one called OSX 10.11, and it'll open up in that program that we installed previously called WinRAR. All you need to do is hit the Extract to button right here at the top and then select where you'd like to save OSX on your computer. I'm going to put it in my documents folder for easy access. And WinRAR is going to start doing its stuff and extracting that file onto your disk. Now it's going to take quite a bit of time because it's a big file. So again, I'm going to fast forward the video here and I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so once that's finished, you can close WinRAR and then we need to go and find the file that it's just extracted. But first of all, you can delete the VMware tutorial folder. You're not going to need it anymore. Okay, head off to the folder that you extracted the file to. I'm going to head into my documents and then you'll find this folder OSX 10.11. Inside that folder, find this file, OSX 10.11. It'll be a VMware virtual machine configuration file. Now, double click that file and it's going to open up inside VMware Player and start running our virtual machine of OSX. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to ask you where the file came from and you just want to select the option I copied it. Okay, and now the virtual machine is going to start running. So it'll take a little bit of time to start up on its first run. So again, I'm going to fast forward the video here. And after a while, you should find yourself at this screen, which is the OSX setup wizard. Now, the first time you run the machine, you might find this weird bug where the OSX screen is kind of much too big for the VMware window. It's very easy to fix. All you need to do is come down here and slightly resize the VMware window, and that'll prompt VMware to resize the OSX screen. And that's it, OSX is running. We just need to go through the setup steps and create your user account. So first of all, select your country of residence, choose your keyboard layout. You don't want to transfer any information and you probably don't want to enable the location services either. Now at this point, you can sign in with an Apple ID if you have one. If you don't, you can just press don't sign in and then you can set up an Apple ID later. Accept the terms and conditions. And this is where we set up your user account. So just enter your name. It'll automatically pick an account name for you and then choose a password. Next, you just need to select your time zone and then hit continue. And that's the final step. I usually untick the send diagnostics and usage data to Apple. I don't really want them using my internet connection. Now just wait a few seconds and your Mac is set up and you'll arrive here on the OSX desktop. There's one final step. The very first time you run it, you'll see this bar pop up at the bottom asking you if you'd like to update tools. And we do want to do that. So just click on the update tools button here on the right. And then inside OSX, you'll see this window pop up here. You just need to double click install VMware tools. And then it's much the same as Windows. You just need to follow through a simple install wizard and then restart OS X. When it's done, you just hit the restart button and that's going to restart your OS X virtual machine. And that's it. Our OSX virtual machine is completely set up now. You can log in with your user account that you chose when we set it up. Now, if you don't want OSX running in this little window, you can make it occupy the whole screen by coming up here and pressing on the full screen mode button. And then I'll pop OSX in as though you're actually using a Mac. Now, one thing I like to do when I first install a brand new Mac is to reduce the size of those dock icons at the bottom. I find the default size much too big. Now, because you want to do iOS app development, we're going to have to install a program called Xcode. It's Apple's development environment for iOS apps. It's really easy to do. All you need to do is open up the Mac App Store. In the search box at the top, type in Xcode and uh, hit return. And then it's the very first search result in the list. Press the get button, which will then turn into an install app button. 
hit that and it's going to ask you for your Apple ID and password. Now, if you already have an Apple ID, which you probably will have if you already have an iPhone, then you can just enter in the details here, press sign in, and then it'll start to install. If you don't, hit create Apple ID, and then you'll just need to go through the registration process. And you can see the button will change to say installing, and that means Xcode is now downloading. You can close out of the App Store and then if you come down to this rocket icon on the dock and press it, you'll see all the apps that are installed on your Mac. And as you can see, Xcode's currently downloading, but it's over four gigabytes in size. Again, it's going to take quite a while to download, so I'm going to fast forward the video at this point. Okay, cool. Xcode has finished installing, so if you just hit its icon and open it up, We'll make sure Xcode's fully set up and ready for you to start learning how to make iOS apps. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is head down to the dock, right click the Xcode icon, go into the options menu and select keep in dock. And that way the Xcode will always be one of the icons you see at the bottom of your OS X screen. Now, the first time you run Xcode, you're going to need to agree to this license agreement and then just enter the password for your OS X user account. You'll hit this screen here, welcome to Xcode, and that's it. Xcode is completely installed on your OS X machine. Let's cover how to install and set up our development environment. Obviously, we're using Xamarin, so head over to Xamarin.com, click the products, and click Xamarin Platform. You should have a link that's easily available. It says download now for free. So go ahead and do that. You'll have to enter a few details about yourself and then click download Xamarin for OS X. Once downloaded, open up the DMG file and double click install Xamarin. Xamarin will take you through the entire process that you need. But first of all, of course, you have to agree to some license terms and it will download and install your prerequisites as well as the Android SDKs and the same thing for iOS. So if I click continue, it gets the Mono Framework, Xamarin Studio and the Xamarin products. Hit continue and everything will be downloaded and installed for you. Now whilst that's happening, because we need to compile our app for iOS, let's head on over to the App Store on your Mac and search for Xcode. Xcode is Apple's own development environment for making iOS and Mac apps using Swift and Objective-C. Click on the first result and once you're taken into it, Click the install button and wait for it to install. Mine says open because I already have this installed. Once you've downloaded Xcode, keep leaving Xamarin to download and do its thing. Open up Xcode and it's within Xcode that we set up our iOS simulators that will be available to Xamarin. Click Window, Devices, and inside here we have a list of simulated devices. These should come pre-installed with Xcode, but if they don't, you can hit the bottom left plus icon and you can add a simulator. You can give it a name. You can choose which version of iOS you want to give it. If you don't have a current version downloaded, you can choose from previous versions of iOS. Once you've downloaded that, you can select the type of device that this version runs on. Then you can go ahead and click Create. So once you've done that, you've installed the simulators, you can quit Xcode, and those simulators will be available later on when you come to use Xamarin.